Hey guys, uh, camera, barnacles. Okay, there, oh, no, stay, stay, there. Let's try that again. You're now ready to dive into one of the most crucial aspects of programming, repeating code with loops. You got it. In today's episode, you're gonna explore the various types of loops we have in Python, comprehend their significance, and illustrate their usage through practical and engaging examples. That's right, welcome back guys to another episode of Code with Josh. If you're new here, you guessed it, I'm Josh. And I'm stoked to have you all here. If you missed last week's episode, I started on week one or step one of the seven steps to master the fundamentals of Python. And if you missed it, I'm gonna try and link it now somewhere here. Check it out. All right, I'm really excited for this episode. Before I jump into it, if you're new here as well, hit the like button and subscribe for more content. That really helps me create more content and reach more students around the world, because that's what I'm trying to do here. And if you're looking for a handcrafted Python guide to help get you started with these core fundamentals, I've made you one, I've got you covered. Don't worry, it's the first link in the description. Head on down there and pick up your free copy that's gonna carry you through these next seven weeks of the fundamentals of Python. All right, I'm gonna try and keep this episode short so I'm not covering everything. It would be too overwhelming for you. I just wanna cover and break down the basics to help you understand all that complex stuff. Now in Python, we have two types of loops and really in most other programming languages, we also have two types of loops. What you learn here today is gonna to apply not just to Python, but any other language you choose to learn and explore in the future. We have the for loop and the while loop. Now the while loop runs while something is true, or if you don't know how many times you want it to repeat, you use the while loop. The for loop, on the other hand, iterates for a set number of times, so you know how many times it's gonna repeat. I've created material that breaks this topic down even further for all you visual learners out there. Let's take a look at that. As I'm starting here with the while loop, I have the basic structure created for you guys. Now let's start off with the first point. A while loop is gonna run while something is true, it continues to run. Or more specifically, while this is true. This is your expression. Now you've seen expressions before. Last week when you were introduced to conditional statements, a condition takes an expression like if 10 greater than five do this. Well, while 10 greater than five repeat. So this is also an expression. Anything inside here is gonna run every single time this loop runs, and this loop continues to run while our expression is true. When the expression becomes false, we stop or the loop breaks. And this is gonna be the first thing to run when the loop stops, or it's really the first line of code that's outside the loop that's gonna run. Now, it's also important to note, just like your conditions, indentation. Indentation is key. You're gonna get errors along the way. You're gonna get errors along the way, it's okay. But just remember, anytime you have an indentation error, look, is your code where it's meant to be? Is it inside the correct condition or is it inside the correct loop? So take a look at my example I've put together for you guys. If you read up top, the user is basically gonna continue to enter a cost or a price of each item. And while the user does not enter zero, the loop repeats. Once the user enters zero, our loop stops and it's gonna print the sum of all the numbers entered. That's what's happening here. Outside here, I have two variables. I have an input, which is collecting the number, the cost, and converting it to an integer. And then I have total. Total is set to zero. Total is what's known as a counter variable. I'm gonna use it to count, one, two, three. But more specifically, I'm gonna use this variable to add things to every time my loop runs. So, while, this is our keyword, while my input cost is not equal to zero, right? So, cost, cost. Every time my loop runs, it's gonna take the total and it's gonna add whatever I said in the input. So the first time my loop runs, total is zero, I enter 10. 
0 plus 10. Total is now equal to 10. That is what just happened there. I will then enter another number, 20. 10 plus 20. Total is now 30. And you can see that every time the loop runs, I'm adding cost, and then I'm asking for another input. Right? Because the loop needs something to continue checking. You need a way to get away from a while loop, or else the while loop is going to run forever. We don't want that. Try to find a creative way to repeat the loop and check your expression every time to evaluate if the expression is true. Great, when the loop runs, it would print off grand total, and then that total, it would be whatever you saw in your terminal. If I enter 10, 20, and then 30, it's going to print off 60, because 10 plus 20 plus 30, 60. You guessed it. Let's start off with the very basic code example to get us warmed up with understanding to break it all down. Let's say you want to make a very basic countdown timer. Well, we could do that. Now, just for this example, I'm going to use something called sleep to make it a little easier for us. I'll talk about this in a future episode. I can now create a variable. Let's call it countdown. Let's say the countdown is going to start at 5. While my countdown variable is greater than 0, I want my loop to repeat. Every time my loop repeats, I would like to print off the current value of countdown. I would like my program to wait one second. Then my program is going to take my countdown variable and subtract 1. How many times is this loop going to run? Well, this loop is going to run the length of my countdown or as long as it's greater than five. There you have it, five, four, three, two, one. Voila, there we go. That's our first example of the very basic constructs of a loop. All right, let me take it a step further. Let's combine what you learned last week and bring it in to our new topic of loops. Let's say I have an input like number, okay? Number equals Let's say it's an integer input, so this is our topic of nesting, enter a number. And then I'm going to create two variables. I'm going to create an even variable, and I could create an odd variable. Now I'm ready to begin the loop while I want my expression. So my loop can repeat until I enter zero. So while my input number is not equal to zero, this loop is going to repeat. Which means every time the loop runs to evaluate this expression, this input should be the last line of code inside the loop here. Make sure it's inside the loop. Cool. So if I don't enter zero and I enter a number, I'm going to see if that number is even. So if the current number is, let's say, modulo 2, which means 2 goes into it an even number of times, I'm going to take my even and let's add 1 because I entered an even number. Else, let's take odd and let's add 1. Uh, we don't need all this space here. Okay, I want my program to repeat. And the first thing I want it to print on the outside is let's say a string of even. And then let's take our even variable. Then let's take our odd. So I can see how many even numbers I entered and how many odd numbers I entered. Running our program, Cool, I'm going to say 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 5, 8, 7, 1. Enter, 0, stop. There we go. I entered three even numbers and six odd numbers. That is pretty cool. Alrighty, let's move on to a final example. In my final example, let's say we want to calculate the factorial of a number. So, once again, I'm going to create a variable called number equals int input. Let's just say enter a number. If I could spell number correctly, let's fix that. Great. Then I have a factorial. And I'm going to say this is going to initially be set to 1. While my number is greater than 0, then I want to take my factorial and I want to multiply it equals by my number. I can then take my number and I can subtract equals 1. When the loop comes to a close, let's just say the factorial is, and then you can print off your factorial here. Let me run it. I'm going to enter like 8. 
There we go. The factorial is 40,320. That is pretty awesome. All right, let's jump into our next topic. So we just hopped out of VS Code and you got to see how the while loop works and you got to play with it. Now it's time to introduce you to the second type of loop in Python. That is the for loop. Now remember, the for loop is used to go through something or iterate through something. We use the for loop when you know how many times you want the loop to repeat. All right, I've broken this down for you guys too. Let's check out the material I've made for you. This is how I've broken down the for loop for you guys. Now we have our Python syntax, for and in. They're just like the English words. Anytime you see a Python word, translate it to English. What does it mean in English? It probably means the same thing in Python. So for element in sequence. Now an element is like a local variable that we create and define here. It represents each item within a sequence. This element you could call anything. Airplane, rabbit, chocolate cake, right? You could call it anything, but we don't do that. Be creative with your names and choose something which relates to what you're going through. When in doubt, choose I. We'll look at that later too. The sequence could be a string, a variable, a list, a dictionary. It's any iterable type of data in Python. That is your sequence. Every time the loop runs, it's gonna repeat it, or it's gonna run this code. Every time the loop runs, it's going to run this code, and then the first line outside your loop, that will run when the loop comes to an end. Cut. So imagine, I have a variable called name. Name equals James. Okay, the value of my variable name is James. There are five elements inside here. Right here are my elements. So every time the loop runs, it's gonna go J, A, M, E, S. That's what's gonna happen when the loop goes through my sequence. Guys, if this is overwhelming or seems complex, I've broken this down so much further in the online courses that I've made, a part of the Zero to Knowing series. I have courses that take you from knowing zero all the way to knowing and applying the skills you learn along the way. They're in the link in the description below. Head on down and check out the courses I have for you to make you a stronger developer. So let's take this into like a literal translation. Over here on the left is the Python lingo, that's what we just saw. Then over here on the right, I have a literal translation, right? So what this means is for every element in my variable, run this code on my element, All right? Just like I mentioned, it's literally gonna go J, A, M, E, S. With every letter, it's gonna apply the code inside here. I've put together a code example that we can see, and this is very basic, but it's kind of creative. Think about when you make a password on something. Sometimes you can't use certain characters. Well, this is how they did it, essentially. I have two variables, username and invalid. I would like to have the user enter their username but I've made a variable invalid which holds all these special characters. These characters are not allowed to be used in the creation of a username. I can then loop through and I can say, hey, for every letter in my username, if that letter is also in my variable invalid, I would like to print not allowed and I would like to print the letter I'm currently on which is not allowed. Pause the video. I broke down the steps, and I think this is pretty useful. When you take Python code and you translate it to English, it makes it so much easier to understand. Alrighty, let's head into VS Code and let's put for loops to use. I already have the first example put together here, and you can see I have a variable. The value of variables is what we call in Python a list. Now, if you already know list, bravo, this is going to be an episode in the future. Okay, if you're looking to learn more about lists now, you can head on down to the first link in the description. That's the blog, and I have articles out about this. So what I wanna do is I wanna go through this list, and if the number is an even number, I wanna print off that number. So for every number in all my numbers, if the current number is even, print the number. 
Let me run it. Look at that, two, four, six, eight. That's exactly what I wanted to see. Pretty cool. Pretty cool, right? All right, now let's be a bit more creative. Let's say I input a word, and I wanna count the number of vowels in that word. How could we do that? How could I approach that? Let's take a look. Let me create a variable called word. So like word equals input, and I can say enter a word. Great. I'm gonna create another variable called vowels. Let's say vowels equals A, E, I, O, U. Then I'm gonna make one called like vowel count equals zero and const count equals zero. So every time I get a vowel in a word, I wanna add one to keep track of the number of vowels. And then I could also keep track of how many consonants we used in that word as well. Now let's loop through that word. What's a good name for your element in this case? Well, for, I'm going through a word, so for every letter in my word, if that current letter is in my variable vowels, then let's take our vowel count and add one. Else, it's not in vowels, so I can take my const count and we can add one to that. When my loop's done, I would like to print off, let's say, number of vowels, and then let's say other letters. Let's give our program a little run. All right, enter a word. What is a good, strong word with a bunch of vowels? Let's say developer. There we go, developer, the number of vowels is four. Well, that seems accurate. Other letters is five. That's awesome, we just used the for loop to iterate through an input, a string, and count for us. That's pretty amazing. Well, there you have it, guys. That is what we are gonna be working on in the second week of mastering the fundamentals of Python. I want you to take all the core concepts you learned last week, and if you missed that episode, head on over and check it out. I'll try and link it around here. And I want you to take that and use it and experiment with loops. Spend this week to master the fundamentals of how we can use loops to repeat code effectively. Wow, I had a lot of fun in this episode and I tried to keep it a bit shorter. There's a lot more I could have gone on to, but I'm not covering everything in these episodes or it just becomes overwhelming. Don't overwhelm yourself. That's what I try and tell my students and that's what I try and tell you through these episodes. Guys, if it is a bit complex and overwhelming, I have courses that I've created specifically for my students, for you guys to take, taking you from knowing nothing, from zero, all the way to knowing and mastering these core fundamentals. Head on down to the link in the description where I have my courses there to take you from zero to knowing, as well as a free handcrafted guide if you're looking to master these fundamentals faster and use them throughout these YouTube episodes that I'm creating. That's in the link as well. Please guys, hit that like button and subscribe as I'm growing and that really helps the channel out. It allows me to create more content and reach more students around the world. Well, there you have it guys, another episode of Code with Josh. And as always, I loved having you here. I will see you guys in my next episode, which is next week, Thursday or Friday. Where do you live? Because we're in different time zones. I'll see you then.